Hello and welcome to the Cyber One YouTube channel. My name is Fred and this video is part 6 of the Walking Robots series. The Shocking Power of Electricity. Electricity is just the flow of electrons, moving from one atom to the next through conducting material. In the wild we see its effects in the form of lightning, a large-scale static discharge. These effects come from the capacitive discharge of charge from one point to another. At lower potential differences in charge, this static is harmless enough to us, but can be a serious problem for the delicate electronics in our robots. Static electricity is not overly helpful to our robots, but the continuous flow from a battery or power supply unit has many benefits. Just a word of caution. A high enough current flowing through the wrong parts of your body, for example your heart, can be lethal, so please treat electricity with some respect. 0.1 amps or 100 milliamp of electricity flowing through your heart will stop it and or cause damage. In Victoria, Australia, you must be licensed to work on voltages greater than 32 volts AC or 50 volts DC. In the standard InMove, designed by Gail Lane Given, 6 volts is the standard and is reasonably safe. Still care should be taken as a short can cause large current to flow heating up wire and causing burns. So to understand what's going on here and make sensible decisions about wire sizes, Let's look at the basic laws of electricity. Ohm's law. Ohm's law states that the current through a conductor between two points is directly proportional to the voltage across the two points. Introducing the constant of proportionality, the resistance, one arrives at the usual mathematical equation that describes this relationship. I equals V over R. Where I is the current through the conductor in units of amperes, V is the voltage measured across the conductor in units of volts, and R is the resistance of the conductor in units of ohms. More specifically, Ohm's law states that the R in this relation is constant, independent of the current. Ohm's law is an empirical relation which accurately describes the conductivity of the vast majority of electrically conductive materials over many orders of magnitude of current. However some materials do not obey Ohm's law, these are called non-ohmic. The law was named after the German physicist Georg Ohm, who, in a paper published in 1827, described measurements of applied voltage and current through simple electrical circuits containing various lengths of wire. Watt's law Watt's law states that the power in a circuit is a product of the voltage and the current. The Watt is named after the Scottish inventor James Watt. This unit was proposed initially by C. William Siemens in August 1882 in his President's Address to the 52nd Congress of the British Association for the Advancement of Science. Noting that units in the practical system of units were named after leading physicists, Siemens proposed that Watt might be an appropriate name for a unit of power. Siemens defined the unit consistently within the then existing system of practical units as the power conveyed by a current of an ampere through the difference of potential of a volt. If you have a motor running at 6 volts drawing 2 ampere then the motor will be using E multiplied by I equals 6 volts multiplied by 2 ampere equals 12 watts. We can combine the Ohm's law and Watt's law to give us a number of useful formula. Voltage drop. The thing to note here is at room or higher temperatures. Every conductor on Earth has some resistance. This includes the wires we use for our electric circuits. Different metals have different resistances, some of which are very low but still present. In an ideal case, cross-section and physical composition of the examined material are uniform across the sample, and the electric field and current density are both parallel and constant everywhere. Many resistors and conductors do in fact have a uniform cross-section with a uniform flow of electric current, and are made of a single material, so that this is a good model. When this is the case, 
The electrical resistivity, symbolized by the Greek letter rho, can be calculated by rho equals r multiplied by a divided by l. R is the electrical resistance of a uniform specimen of the material. L is the length of the specimen, and A is the cross-sectional area of the specimen. This can be transposed to R equals rho multiplied by L divided by A. The most common metal we use for wiring is copper. The rho for copper is 1.68 x 10 to the power of minus 8. Let's just work a couple of example wire sizes commonly used in building our robots. Ribbon cable is used on many of our robots and has a typical size of 28 AWG. For those of us in the metric world, that equates to 0.321 mm in diameter or 0.0810 mm squared cross-sectional area CSR. Let's look at 1 meter length of this wire. R equals 0.0000000168 divided by 0.0810 mm squared equals 0.2074 ohms per meter. Let's assume for a minute we have a servo motor at the end of this 1 meter length of wire and we are supplying 6.00 volts and the motor is drawing 0.5 amp of current. Using Ohm's law, V equals IXR. We get 0.5 amp multiplied by 0.2074 ohms equals 0.1037 volts. Because we will also have the current returning via another of the same size wire, we find we get 0.2074 volts lost through the wire. So the servo is getting 5.79 to 6 volts across it. That not too bad. But what if we stall the servo and get 2 amps flowing? Now it's 2 amp multiplied by 0.2074 ohms multiplied by 2 meters equals 0.8296 volts so our servo ends up with 5.1704 volts across it. That's not too bad, but what if we use the same ground wire at 1 meter long and have 5 servos running our robot hand, all grasping a ball as tight as it can. Now, of our 2 meters, 1 meter of it will have 2 amps flowing through it but the other is the shared return and will have 10 amps flowing. 2 amp multiplied by 0 0.2074 ohms plus 10 amp multiplied by 0 0.2074 ohms equals 2.4888 volts. Now our servos have 3.5112 volts across them. That may be a bit too low for them to function correctly and may cause them to behave as strange ways. There are also other issues which I will get into in a later section when we look at electric motors. Okay, so let's look at this again, but use a thicker wire. A WG-17 or a diameter of 1.15 mm or a CS of 1 squared. R equals 0.0000000168 divided by 1.00 mm squared equals 0.0168 ohms per meter. So at 2 amps for one servo we get 2.0 amp multiplied by 0 0.0168 ohms multiplied by 2 meters equals 0 0.0672 volts. That gives us 5.9328 volts across the servo, much better than the 5.7926 volts we had with the ribbon cable. Now let's look at the 5 servos. 2.0 amp multiplied by 0 0.016 ohms plus 10.0 amp multiplied by 0 0.016 ohms equals 0 0.192 volts. This time our servos have 5.808 volts across them, well within normal operating voltages. When we choose the wires we use within our robot, we want to do two things. Make them as short as possible particularly as there is any real current flow involved. Make sure they are large enough cross-sectional area to prevent voltage drop from causing issues. Remember, the longer the wires are, the greater the resistance will be and therefore the greater the voltage drop. The bigger cross-sectional area the wire has, the lower the resistance and so the lower the voltage drop. If you can't avoid a long wire run, then consider increasing the cross-sectional area to counter the voltage drop issue. Lost power. So let's look at the ribbon cable example of our servo drawing to ampere. 
Our power supply is still delivering 6 volts and at 2 amp that's still 12 watts but remember we had a voltage drop that resulted in 5.1704 volts across the servo. That's 5.1704 volts multiplied by 2 amp equals 10.3408 watts. We lost 1.6592 watts of power to the voltage drop. This is a loss and is wasting our power. With the heavier OG17 wire, we only lose 0.384 watts of power. Now of course we could go with bigger wire still and reduce this further, but the downside of that is the wire is more expensive per meter. It has a higher mass that our robot must lug around, takes more space in our already crowded wiring looms. So choosing the correct size wire for the job is very important. Your wiring loom can also have different sized wires for different jobs. Don't think all your wires have to be the same size. They don't. The only other reason you might want to use a larger wire is for mechanical strength where vibration or bending might become an issue. If you are looking to limit the damage from bending, a wire made up of lots of strands is the best option. That will do for this video. If you like this video, then please click on the like button. You may even want to subscribe and click on the notification bell to be notified when more videos like this one are released. If you have any questions, then please leave a comment below. All of this costs you no money and helps us to create more content like this video. If you would like to help the channel out further, then please consider becoming a Patreon. There will be a link in the description. We look forward to seeing you in the next video.